What is up guys, so you might have noticed this season of the Arrowverse, I have not been reviewing Legend of Tomorrow. The reason for that is because the CW schedule for the Arrowverse this year is pretty, pretty bad. The reason, that the, the actual schedule is Sunday you have Supergirl, Monday you have Arrow, and then Legend of Tomorrow, and then on Tuesday you have The Flash. The first thing I want to say is that this schedule is pretty bad because I hate how it's so condensed into the first three days of the week when you also have Wednesday and Thursday to air a new episode and maybe Friday. I don't really know if CW airs new episodes of TV shows on Friday. I know they don't do it on Saturday, but you do have Wednesday and Thursday to air a new episodes. so I don't really get why they don't spread out the Arrowverse at least throughout the week because and when it comes to Legends of Tomorrow, I definitely do prioritize both Arrow and The Flash over Legends of Tomorrow, so because of that, I review Arrow the next day after it comes out, which is Tuesday, and then that day The Flash comes out, which then I review it the next day after that, which is Wednesday, and then the first chance I get to review Legends of Tomorrow in any given week is Thursday, which is three days after the episode actually comes out, instead of the one day for every other episode of the week, except for Titans, which I do review the same day most weeks. So at that point, three days later, I don't think it's worth it to review the episode, especially when I do have other uh, videos to make, like top 10 videos of the week, or I mean uh, moments of the week, or trailer breakdowns for the next episodes of Arrow and The Flash. So that is the reason I have not been reviewing Legends of Tomorrow this year. Now this week, The Flash is not airing a new episode, so I do get the chance to review the first three episodes of Legends of Tomorrow. They will be very, very short reviews. And also, this will not become a weekly thing. I still have the problem with the schedule of Legends of Tomorrow, but every chance that I get to review an episode of Legends of Tomorrow, either the day after it comes out or at most two days after it comes out, then I will take that chance. This week is the first chance this season. So, the way I will go about this specific review is I will review each episode separately and I will include timestamps in the description down below. If I didn't, definitely remind me in the comments to each episode so that if you want to skip to a specific episode in this video, you can do that. So without further ado, let's start with the first episode titled The Virgin Gary. So I know a lot of people like this episode a lot and I understand why it is a fun episode, but I also do not agree at all. I thought this episode was pretty mediocre, not anywhere near the best season premiere of Legend of Tomorrow. I thought, first of all, there was a way too much drama from Ava and Sarah in this specific episode. I really didn't like those scenes at all. And then there was the unicorn, who the actual unicorn was good. The CGI was fine. It was a little wonky at times, and it was pretty clear that they were cutting away from it as much as they can. And then there was the fact that it was a savage beast instead of like a m magical creature or it was magical but magical in the sense that it is colorful and you know you, you you know what I mean a unicorn so that was a nice twist but I really do not like the mythical creature villain of the week and the reason for that is because they're literally just characters from literature outside of DC comics and I would rather them face actual DC characters in this season so that is my opinion on the mythical creatures the unicorn was definitely not terrible but also Definitely not as good as people are saying. And then there's Constantine, and he is great. He's already probably my favorite character on this show, and it's kind of weird seeing him next to the rest of the Legends because the rest of the Legends almost never wear their costume. Sarah almost never wears her White Canary costume. I don't think she wore it once in these first three episodes. Zari didn't wear her costume and hasn't since the last season. Citizen Steel does not wear his costume anymore, and he only wore it like two times, three times in season two. I don't think he wore it at all in season three, really, which is crazy. Ray wore his costume every episode, but very, very briefly in every episode. And then there's Constantine, who definitely does have less of a costume but it is still a costume and it is very iconic while the rest of them do not wear their costumes it just he pops the most because of it and he just became the, my favorite character on this show already he's easily the highlight of this season but getting back to the actual review of uh legend of tomorrow season four episode one there was also a side storyline with nate and his father which i thought first of all it was a good storyline definitely was a good storyline actually giving nate some character development or his uh, parents being fleshed out a little bit i just don't think they should have done it in the first episode of the season the first episode usually should just be resolving everything that happened at the end of the last episode or at least actually i don't think that at all i think it should slightly resolve what happened at the end of the last 
season and just set up the new season while this episode jumps straight into this side plot with Nate that I should I think they should have uh, definitely pushed off until the second episode that being said I did like this side plot and the fact that Nate is not on the legends and it's actually working with the time bureau even though I hate the fact that he really never turns into steel or citizen steel I do like the dynamic between him and Gary and Ava and I think that it has been good this season so I'll give this episode a 7.8 out of 10. So moving on to the second episode titled Witch Hunt. So first thing I want to talk about is the fact that this episode revisits a timeline that or at least I mean a time period that uh, Legend of Tomorrow has already been to which is Salem uh, 1600s I think and I gotta say they've already been here and last time they were here it was fine but this time it was so boring I think this time period is incredibly boring as a time period it's not very interesting and on top of that they have already done that time period before so it feels like the show is running out of time periods to use despite the fact that they have an unlimited amount of time periods to use in fact they can create ones in the future they could even visit the flash forwards on arrow and I think that them revisiting this time period which is a pretty boring time period is definitely it's, it's not a good sign for this episode so the villain of this week or this episode was the fairy godmother and I would say she was easily the best of the first three mythical creature villains that being said that doesn't really mean much because I still really don't like this concept but she was uh, fun because her personality was so incredibly wacky and cartoony which would not work for a recurring villain but she is a one-time villain so that would that that is fine her powers are also pretty interesting not because they're unique but because they are so subtly she is so subtly one of the most powerful Arrowverse villains ever which I thought was pretty cool to see but again she is a mythical creature and I really don't like that concept so there's not much praise going to her but a lot more praise than the other two villains of the week to be honest I don't really have much more of an opinion about this episode I thought everything else that happened was fine I thought that Zari really going after these witch hunters was good because it was her turning a little bit bad I do want her to become a villain straight up because she is a villain in the comics and I think that would make for a good way for Black Adam to become a villain of a season and then for Shazam to show up possibly and in this episode in episode two she did kind of turn a little bit bad because she was about to murder like 30 people now those people were definitely bad people but I mean it was still murder so I think that that could definitely make her turn bad this season which I would definitely like to see so I'll give this episode a 7.5 out of 10 Moving on to episode 3, which is titled Dancing Queen. Now, the actual Dancing Queen in this episode was Charlie, who is a new character and maybe new member to the Legends, which, just out of the bat, I'll say that I hate the idea of her joining the Legends. First thing is that she has no superpowers at this point, so what would be the point? She also has no skills at all, so it doesn't make any sense for her to join the Legends. Second, and the main reason I hate the fact that she's joining the Legends is because the main reason she is on the team is so that the show can keep the actress of Maisie Richardson Seller, the actress who played Amaya. And the reason I hate this is because, not because I have anything against the actress, I absolutely do not. I have something against the fact that, the, in terms of a story perspective, Amaya should have been written out of the show after season 2. They extended that to season 3 and that worked fine, but the end of season 3, she was actually written off the show. And the way they brought her back in this episode, she didn't have, I mean, they didn't really bring Amaya back. They brought the actress back in such a forced way. It was so ridiculous to me. And I hate how on this show in particular, at least with this character, they cannot get, they, could, they, they couldn't really get themselves to get rid of the actress, even though the, the actual character was already written off the show. And I think in terms of a writing perspective and a story perspective, this is completely ridiculous the fact that Constantine could just turn off her powers was I mean it makes sense because she is a mythical creature but at the same time it is completely ridiculous how they made her be be played by the actress of Maisie Richards and Seller it is completely ridiculous and I think a lot of people agree with me that it was so forced it was a lame excuse to keep an actor on the show for absolutely no reason then there was Ray in the episode who I thought it was nice to see him finally be given some spotlight. 
on the show. He doesn't really, he isn't really given much spotlight for the most part. But I, I do think he was acting completely out of character in this episode, like completely out of character. He acted nothing like he usually does. Now he doesn't really usually act in character compared to how he was in the first time we saw him, which was on Arrow. Which on Arrow in the in season three, he was a genius who was very very committed to his cause based on his origin story and committed to building the suit and helping the city and now on the Legends of Tomorrow and this has been a problem since season one he acts like a complete goofball and kind of like an idiot and he doesn't know what he's doing and he isn't really committed to his cause like he was in Arrow season three and I liked uh, I liked Ray so much more on Arrow than I do on Legends of Tomorrow but in this episode he was particularly out of character and I did not like it in this episode so one thing about this episode that I really really liked I mean I loved this storyline it was a storyline with John Constantine in this episode like I said John Constantine is easily the biggest highlight of the season so far and I'm really excited to see more of him this season and this episode in particular his storyline which was about him going to his hometown meeting his past mother and his father giving a lot of his backstory now I don't think I don't remember if this backstory was mentioned on Constantine before which, if they did, I don't think they will take away much from this storyline, although I don't think they did. I just thought uh, John telling his origin story, not really his origin story, his backstory and his childhood as he grew up was great. It really fleshed out his character more so, and I really, really do like him in this season. So I'll give this episode a 7.4 out of 10. Despite the fact that John was great, the rest of the episode was very, very subpar. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the first three episodes of Legends of Tomorrow season four. I don't really, I didn't really love them that much. John Constantine is pretty great though. But let me know what you thought about the episodes in the comments down below. If you love them and you think that I am wrong about them, let me know in the comments because I am very curious to find out why people like these episodes if they do. But let me know all everything, all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.